Hello data managers, welcome to the first lesson in Unit 5. Unit 5 is all about solving problems using counting techniques and the very first lesson is going to be looking at two counting principles which are additive and multiplicative. Now let's take a look at our first example. List all of the names for the new baby. So we're going to choose three possible names for the first name, Dylan, Matthew and Christopher. And we're going to choose two possibilities for the second name, the middle name, Andrew and Jeffrey. So we have our five names. Now, what are all possible combinations? Well, here we've got them. We've got six possibilities. Dylan with Andrew, Dylan with Jeffrey, Matthew with Andrew, Matthew, Matthew with Jeffrey, and you get the picture. We can also show this as a tree diagram where you show your first names on the first level and your middle names on the second level. So let's take a look at the tree diagram that we can create out of this and let's give names to each of the parts of it. So each of the levels is a choice. So you'll notice here we have the first choice which happens to be Dylan, Matthew or Christopher and our second choice which happens to be Andrew or Jeffrey for each of the names for the first choice. So that's a level. Now each branch, and you'll notice that the branch is highlighted in red, is one possibility. And each branch ends up at one of these endpoints, which are called nodes or leaves. So down at the very bottom we have six different possible leaves or nodes. And each of these leaves or nodes represents a pairing of a first name and a middle name. So let's recap what we're looking at. This is a tree diagram. Each level represents one of our choices. So a choice from the first name or a choice from the middle name. And each branch, in this case represented by red all the way down, each branch represents one possible outcome. And the number of leaves or nodes here at the end represents the total number of possibilities. So in this case we have six different total possibilities. We have Dylan Andrew, Dylan Jeffrey, Matthew Andrew, Matthew Jeffrey, Christopher Andrew, and Christopher Jeffrey as our possibilities. So that is our tree. Now what happens when we add an extra middle name? So the parents have chosen to add Chase or Alex as another middle name. So now how many possibilities are there? Well, we can use one form of solution which we call using listing. So we list all possibilities or we exhaust all of the possibilities. So Dylan Andrew Chase, Dylan Andrew Alex, Dylan Jeffrey Chase, J Dylan Jeffrey Alex. Those are all the solutions that have Dylan as the first name and one of the pairings of Andrew Jace, Andrew Alex, Jeffrey Chase, Jeffrey Alex for the middle names. The same thing for the other two possible first names. That's the first solution. The second solution is to use a tree diagram like we did before and end up with our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 possible outcomes. Now you can see that very quickly using either of these methods is going to become quite cumbersome. So instead we can rely on this thing called a fundamental counting principle and you, you'll intuitively understand this. It is the product rule where you take the product of a bunch of numbers. So if you have an action that can be performed in a certain number of ways, if a first action can be performed in m ways and a second action in n ways, then there are m times n ways to do both. Pretty straightforward. Something that we grasp usually around grade 9, grade 10. The product rule that we have can be extended to for a third choice, a fourth choice, a fifth choice, and so on until you run out of choices. Now the thing that you need to note is that AND is really important. If you run into the word AND, it means you are dealing with the product rule. The other thing that you have to think about is AND may not be included in the question text. 
However, it may be implied in the question text. So if you see the word and or you get the sense that it ought to be there, that is a very strong hint that you need to use the product rule. So let's take a look at the product rule in action. During dear, so some schools call it dear, drop everything and read. My school calls it SSR, sustained silent reading, and I've heard other acronyms as well. Anyway, during dear, students go to the front of the class and pick something to read. And in this case, there is a bin with 20 magazines and 35 books. One person must select both a book and a magazine. So the question is, how many different combinations of reading materials might you select? Now, in this case, we take a look at our question. You must select both a book and a magazine. That is the clue that we're dealing with product rule. So in this case, we have 20 magazines, 35 books. That would imply that we're dealing with 20 times 35 equals 700. So there are 700 combinations of magazines and books for you to select. Now, you don't need to use a tree diagram or a listing diagram to do that. You would run out of paper very quickly if you were to do that. So let's take a look at a second example. What if you were asked to pick just one thing to read out of the 20 magazines and 35 books? How many options do you have in this case? Well, 20 plus 35 is 55. So you probably were thinking, yeah, that's pretty obvious. If I got 20 magazines and 35 books, then I can only really have 55 different options. Now, do you know what? This is not the product rule. This is the other fundamental counting principle, and that's the rule of sum. So the rule of sum says that if you can perform a first action in a certain number of ways and a second action in a different number of ways, well, in another number of ways, there are m plus n ways to do the first or the second action. So in this case, you're looking for the keyword or, or you're asking yourself the question, can only one thing happen, not both? So I want you to take a moment to think about this. I'm going to pause the slide here for a moment. So look for the keyword or or ask yourself the question can only one thing happen not both crucial for you to identify pro problems that use the rule of sum so let's take a look at a dinner problem you've been invited to a wedding your cousin knows that people like a choice when it comes to their meal options. On your invitation, you can choose between soup or salad as a starter. Then you can choose beef, chicken, or pasta as your main course. And lastly, you can choose from amongst four pies and two cakes for your dessert. How many meals could be ordered? So in this case... So interestingly enough, this is a mixed problem. For your starter, you've got two choices which leads us to use the rule of thumb. In this case, we're choosing soup or salad. Remember the keyword or. For the main course, we also have three choices, which once again gives us the rule of thumb. So we have our beef, chicken, or pasta, or being the keyword. So it's one plus one plus one equals three. And then for dessert, likewise, we have a total number of six choices, which again is the rule of thumb. However, then we're going to put in the product rule into action. So 2 times 3 times 6, 2 times 3 is 6, times 6 gives us... So the last thing I'd like you to notice is that you can't always rely on the word and to be your clue. You'll notice that it says, lastly, you can select a dessert from four pies and two cakes. This would imply the product rule. However, it wasn't. It was the rule of sum. So, our three choices for the product rule were a starter, and a main course, and a dessert. So we use the product rule for our final result. And let's finish off with a six-sided dice. So, if we have a six-sided dice and we roll it five times, sorry, a six-sided die, and we roll it five times, how many different outcomes are possible? So, is this an OR problem? or an AND problem.
So in this case, we are using the keyword AND because each die has six possible outcomes and we get that possible possibility from the rule of sum, one plus so the options for 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and they all add up to six different possibilities. Now as far as the five dice rolls are concerned we have five different rolls which means we're using the product rule the keyword and die 1 and die 2 and die 3 and die 4 and die 5. Multiply the five dice together and you end up with 7,776 possibilities. Now there's a neat little shortcut that you can use when you've got the same possible outcome for each of the different choices. You can use the exponent rule. 6 to the power of 5. Now that is it for a, a learning activity 5.1. Do the assignment that goes with it and then proceed on to activity 5.2. If you've got any questions, please make sure to email me. Please make sure to post in the staff and student lounge. Mr. Dunbar signing off.